Hello, everybody. It's the Friday episode of I Plead the First. Welcome, and I hope you had a great week. I want you to go out and have a great weekend, but before you do, before you go out and get sloppy, watch this. All right, we got a great episode today. We're having a little bit of fun. Um, we wanted to do an episode that was a little lighter than what we've been doing because we've been digging heavy into the politics, and a lot of times it's just stuff that pisses you off. So. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do an episode where we get to know each other. Uh, of course, we know each other, but we want you guys to get to know us. So we actually have a couple of questions that we randomly wrote down just the top of our heads to kind of throw throw some questions out there that I'm interested in knowing about you. <laughs> <laughs> so this will be good. I'll a little intimidated now. Yeah, so I bet. No, these are pretty easy. <laughs> so the first one, I'll start. Okay. Ladies first. Um this one's fairly easy, so tell me, Joe, what did you do for from your 20s till now? What have you done with your life? Yeah, that's an easy one. Yes. <laughs> so uh, long story short is I joined the Air Force when I was 17 years old. So my entire adult life has been consumed by my military career. Uh, so I know probably a lot of viewers out there have seen me saying that I'm a 20-year vet and look at me like, what the hell, you're young as hell. Yeah. That's why, because I joined when I was 17, 17, 17 years old. What did you graduate? I mean, obviously you graduated. Um, did you go early? That's a funny story, actually. That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> yeah, that's How a funny story. There? So uh, I had an interesting childhood. I had, uh, I have people that love me dearly, and I, I won't disparage anybody. Uh, they, they gave me love during my childhood and helped me through it, but there were also challenges um, in my childhood, and I won't go into those. I'm not going to bring the mood down, but... Uh, I made a choice when I was 16 years old to quit school uh, as a freshman. I just finished my freshman year of high school. I quit school, um, was working construction. Uh, my dad was like, dude, you got to get a GED at least. So I went and got my GED, um, which was fine. That worked for a little bit. The plan was always to join the military, but I was 16. So that wasn't happening yet. Um, so I had some time to burn, and I started the process to join the military. Originally, I wanted to do the Army, uh, made the choice to join the Air Force by uh, recommendation of a family friend. The Air Force was like, hey, man, uh, the Army might be cool with your GED, but the Air Force, not so much. So they sent me through a program to finish my high school diploma. So really? I, Yeah, so I actually finished my high school diploma in three days. Holy <laughs> it was uh, it was a really uh, work at your own pace type of mm -hmm. test test out basically of high school, and it was accredited high school diploma from the state of Missouri. So and it actually came from a community college. So I went to a community college, got my high school diploma. That is awesome. I didn't yeah. even know they did that. That is amazing. Yep. So I got my GD, then I got my high school diploma, and I joined the Air Force when I was seventeen. And you asked me about my 20s to now. Yes. So uh, basically three years later, I had been done with my first assignment in the Air Force. So I had gotten all the way through basic training, tech school, my entire first assignment in the Air Force. And I got orders to Beale Air, Fo Air Force Base in California. So I was assigned to, I'm actually wearing the hat tonight. Most people won't be able to see it, <laughs> uh, but it's the U-2 spy plane, uh, which was at the time oh, a selectively... Cool selectively manned unit you had to have a good record you have to be uh had all your stuff together to be picked and you had to apply and then they call your boss and all that kind of stuff so that was 17 18 19 19 and then i'm, I'm 20 actually at the time when i went to beal air force base wow so you had everything done before any of the kids that graduated i had already yeah I, so damien was already born and would have been damien was born when i was 18 so uh, he was three years old when we went to California. Uh, Devin wasn't around yet. We went out to California, selectively manned unit. Uh, super nervous. I'm just a kid, man. But I've been in the Air Force for almost four years already at this point. Wow. Um, made staff sergeant immediately when I got there. So I showed up as a senior airman, sewed on staff sergeant not too long after that. 
So I'm a 21 year old staff sergeant and I had finished my training as a uh, pressure suit uh, person. They call us PSD. Right. So I had finished all my training as a PSD guy, <clears throat> learned how to work on uh, spacesuits, learned how to work on the ejection seats, the uh, parachutes. The, it was a year long school to get through all of that. And at 21, as a 21 year old staff sergeant, I had my first deployment. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. <clears throat> Yep, I believe I was 21 for my first appointment, 21 or 22. So that was a five-year assignment. Um, went through five years of that unit. It was some of the best times of my life. A lot of the guys that watched the show are actually from that unit. Those are my brothers. And, uh, you know, we don't always get along, all of us from the unit, but we're, it's it's kind of a family. And even the guys that we know we don't get along with each other, uh, they can knock on my door today and they got a place to stay no matter what. So. It was the some of the absolute best times of my life and some of the absolute toughest times of my life. And my wife at the time and I, we went through tons of hardships. We were deployed a lot, um, on the road a lot. And by the time I came uh, here to my third duty assignment, I was 26, wow. 26 years old, staff sergeant on my third assignment and had already missed making tech, I think once or twice when I got here. So I was on pace to be like a 30 year old master sergeant. Um, a lot changed in my life over that uh, first few years here in Offit. Um, I got stationed here and the deployments slowed down a little bit, wasn't on the road nearly as much, wasn't, and not just deployments at the other assignment we would get a lot of TDYs, which is just temporary duty. So we would go to places to catch jets or to air shows or whatever, stuff like that. So we are gone a lot. Uh, when we showed up here, life changed significantly. We weren't all out on air show tours. We weren't out on... Um, so it just we, slowed way down? Or? Slowed way down. Like it's just way different pace than what I was used to. Um, I had troubles adjusting because that they treated us really well at that other job as, as a YouTube PSD guy. Everybody, we had a real high uh, level of confidence and, and well, it's specialized, isn't it? Super specialized. Yeah. yeah there's uh, like 180 people, maybe 200 people in the whole world that are certified at any one time. I'm no longer certified, obviously. But, and there's a, there's an alumni, I mean, that, you know, they could do the job and probably I could get up, get trained and be back doing it in right. a couple of weeks, probably. Uh, but it's about 200 people at any one time in the world that can do that. So that's cool. You get a lot of confidence from that. Sometimes mm -hmm. arrogance. You're a uh, rock star. Yeah. You're a little rock star and you're living on the road. So it's very similar to that kind of lifestyle, drinking and partying and doing stuff you're not supposed to be doing. So mm -hmm. There was great times and there's bad times and we saw tons of crazy stuff. I bet. And that last four years of my 20s was here, um, kind of adjusting to not being a rock star anymore and just being another dude in the Air Force that nobody really cared what I did, to be honest with you. And mm -hmm. it, the job wasn't as prestigious by any means. Uh, so my ego took a hit yeah. and I had a big ego at the time. Uh, so a kid? Yeah, yeah. I had a huge ego, I, a huge ego. And it got in the way of my marriage. It got in the mm -hmm. way of my friendships. It got in the way of so many things in my life. So I got taken down a peg or two coming here just by not doing cool stuff. Yeah. Even though I say that, but if I tell the average person what I did here, then they're probably like, that's awesome. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I did, I found a love here. I found a passion here as far as what I did. I found a jet that I liked. I found a mission that I liked here. I, I clung on to that. Uh, Cobra Ball, <laughs> which is another really cool jet that does really cool stuff that I'll talk about someday. But then I kind of did that and bought a house. I bought my first house at 28. Nice. Which we're sitting in right now. And my first house would happen to be a lake house. So yeah, so you're here <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna retire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was proud of myself, started gaining back some of my confidence. Uh, marriage fell apart. 
And so he's single. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> yeah, military men are single. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, now I'm a single dad and I do this for fun and calm down quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't party as much. I still party sometimes, but my life's significantly different. Yeah. So visited a whole bunch of countries and did a whole bunch of really cool things. That's you what I did. You lived a very full. Yeah. A full life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. The last 20 years was crazy. How awesome Absolutely is that? Crazy. Yeah. So probably longer answer than you expected. No, it's exactly what I wanted. So <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> but All no, right. that's great. No. So now do I go? Or yes, you go? now you go. Okay. All right. So my question, I give you a, a, for the first question is a little bit easier question than you gave me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Where are you from? <laughs> well, I'm from, well, I'm actually from Colorado. Okay. I'm born and raised. Um, we grew up uh, in a very farm town area with like, that was probably like at the time, 700 people. Um, we had like 52 in our graduated class. Oh, wow. Yeah, very small. Actually, my husband grew up a block away from me and I've known him since I was five years old. So oh, wow. That's how little this town was. Um, yeah, we used to meet at the oak tree in the middle. Have you ever heard the song? Yes. In the middle? Oh, yeah. That's our song. No kidding. It's a mile, exactly a mile away from each other. So we'd meet at the tree and then he'd come to my house, I'd go to his house. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, born and raised in Colorado. Um, was there 700 fence posts between his I, house and I yours? bet you there was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I have to go back and count now because those same houses are there. Um, ended up moving out to uh, Nebraska because I was transplanted by the railroad. Okay. Um, and I guess I can go into, I started... Um, uh, the railroad there is, believe it or not, um, uh, training admin, and I was there for like seven months and then got laid off because they did, um, they're going through their Project 75 at the time and um, ended up taking a position because the union called and said, I'm going to lose everything if I don't, and as a janitor. And I worked as a janitor for three months, no. <laughs> cleaning depots. Wow. Um, yeah, so I would... And I didn't understand how you can clean a depot for eight hours. I just, who can clean eight hours? So I would stack their water perfectly. I mean, I would bring water in, put by their coffee machines. So when I, and then I'd go sleep. I know this is so bad. I, was even, <laughs> I would because I worked, I had prior to then, I had signed up for 19 credit hour, credit hours of college because I was laid off. So I was taking six hours of class during the day, driving, from Colorado to Wyoming to go to work, which is a two hour drive. So, and then I would work all night and then I would drive back home. And so I would <laughs> go to school, drive, clean, sleep in the closet, in work. I made a bed <laughs> for an hour, get up and then I would clean a little bit more, do my homework and then, yeah, so. Wow. And then from there, I just kind of moved on from, uh, I moved right on up. You <laughs> did move right <laughs> yes, on I up. Did. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if you had that question on there, so I might as well just finish. But from there, I moved up into uh, um, admin, engineering admin. And um, so I managed all the budgets and stuff for the, uh, the uh, director of engineering in Colorado. I did that for about a year. Um, had a little bit of friction, not to say the least, with one of my um, bosses. To the point that the uh, superintendent recommended that I go ahead and apply for jobs that would actually be my skill set. So I applied for a position in Omaha and was accepted right away. And they normally don't go outside that 90 mile range and they did accept me. So they brought me in and I so started you picked up the family. And yeah, we, we actually did a vote. We all you did a family vote. Yes. <laughs> so you actually have like a family meeting, we like you see on TV. We had a family, family meeting, guys. We did. <laughs> we sat down and had a family. Jason lost. He actually did not want to move at all. <laughs> I've never heard this stuff. <laughs> yeah. This is new for me too. This yeah. is new for me too. We sat around and we who who wants to go to Nebraska? His was the only hand down. Well, he was outvoted by five. So we moved. Um, Moved out here, I started in project estimating. So I used to estimate uh, uh, bridge projects. The original was to be an estimator uh, for bridges. And 
um, ended up doing track. So uh, I didn't, I, I did estimations for um, new construction and like frogs. I can go into that as a whole other story. <laughs> um, we probably don't want to get too no, railroad nerdy. No. <laughs> but we got a couple of railroad heads watching though. They oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they know what frogs are. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> um, from there, I was there probably about a year and moved into a vegetation management position. I was there about 13 years actually. Wow. Um, and I loved that. And I was the rock star. Honestly, that's how I felt yeah. um, too. So my ego was pretty high. Yeah. Um, and when they let, they actually let me go in September because of the cuts and I've moved on from there, but, and I'm still the vision leader for vegetation management, not the same, right? not the same. So I totally understand. Yeah, we don't, we, yeah, we don't have to mention companies yeah. or anything just to keep everyone yeah. safe, but yeah, not the same. Yeah. But, um, but that, yeah, that's where I came from probably right over here. And that's, we have bought a house on the lake and. That's how you and I are going to be yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> From many, many parties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hey, I just said I party less to these people. You just blew my cover. All right. Oh, come on. Every Friday. All right. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So this is an easy one. I hope so. <laughs> so what is your favorite food and why? My favorite food that is not easy at all. <laughs> That's an easy what? question. No, it's not. <laughs> um... Apparently, you haven't gone out to eat with me. Have we never gone out to eat anywhere? No. I have a terrible time ordering because I love food. And anybody that looks at me Narrow can tell Narrow it down that. to your favorite three. And then... You know, I'll just... I'll, I'll generalize. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's fair for this question. Uh, my favorite food, if I had to eat the same thing for the rest of my life, would be Mexican food. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I would be okay eating Mexican food for the rest of my life. If I can have that whole section yes right. yeah. yeah everything tacos burritos, yeah. The yeah. Works. yeah yeah torta torta is actually my favorite do you like menudo yeah yeah my like dad doesn't he hates menudo because so if you're watching tongue? he hates it he thinks it's gross i don't think he eats tongue either i, I love tongue no i love lingua that's gross <laughs> no lingua so the meat is so tender it's it's perfect you can't even because i would think tongue would be hard no it's super like tender. chewy it's super tender really yeah I want to int I want to introduce you to Lingua Tacos. Okay. <laughs> All right. So have you had Rocky Mountain oysters? No, I won't do that. Okay, because of the thought of it. I will not eat. They taste. When good. I say I won't do that, that's that's a false statement, right? Because there's mm -hmm. there's always like. So that means you won't do it. Means you have not ever tried them. Have you ever tried them? I have. Okay. Okay. It's not something I like or care to ever do again. But I mean, obviously, is it because of the taste? Or if the I'm in some crazy scenario where I'm in a survival <laughs> mode to eat. and nuts are the yeah. only thing that I can yeah. eat, then yeah, sure, I'm going to eat them because uh, there's nothing that pretty much nothing I would say no to in that situation. You know, they don't taste bad. I can eat them though, either. I won't eat them. I just don't. It's the not, thought of it grosses yeah. me the hell. I, yuck. Yeah, I can't do it. It's probably a little bit of a macho thing for me. I don't know. It's, I could totally see that yeah. for a guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. So this one's a tough one. All right. And Bring you it. could probably go for a while on this one. Uh, so go as deep or as, or as not deep as you feel comfortable with. But tell me about your childhood. Well, I could actually write a book <laughs> on my childhood. Um, and I can go pretty deep. Uh, I was so... Um, when I was young, when I was, my first biological father um, was, he was very, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic and very abusive. Um, and he actually had mental issues. Um, come to find out, he was super bipolar, um, which I didn't know until recently. I guess I, he just passed away uh, about a month ago. And which is sad because I'm not really sad about it because I didn't know the guy and I did not like the guy. Um, very much, uh, but um, so my mom had left him uh, and dated and met with my stepdad. So it's like I think uh, women tend to unfortunately follow patterns of mm -hmm. men. They get a men do too. Yeah, men follow yep. patterns of women. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So she met another man who was an alcoholic and very very abusive. Um, 
uh, mentally and physically. Um, he didn't like totally beat her, but he was very mean to us. He was mm. super jealous of my the love my mom had for us and massive jealous guy. So if a pen came out missing, we were grounded for a month. Um, I was five minutes late when I was six years old and I was grounded for the entire summer to my bedroom. I found out my Mickey Mouse record player played the radio <laughs> when I was six. Yeah, <laughs> because I was so bored. I mean, he, he literally over dumb things. We'd go out to dinner all the time. It got to the point and we were MFers and F, uh, fat Fs and all kinds of stuff. I was a B since I was little. Um, one of his comb came up missing and he destroyed my, I was eight years old, seven years old, and he destroyed my baby doll carriage completely in front of me. Yeah, and Santa, we didn't, I don't think any children are gonna watch. Santa Claus wasn't real to us. He made sure of that when we turned eight because he bought those. Um, so she finally left him. Um, I think I was 15. I, I, ran, I pretty much ran away from home quite a lot. Um, so it was a hard growing up, mm -hmm. very hard childhood. Um, I moved out when I was 15, and I moved 500 miles away from my mom. Oh, wow. And I started uh, working for family, and I managed three donut shops with my aunt. So I worked 16 hours a day, <laughs> and I quit school. I actually quit school when I was 15 years old um, to work and to get away. So I, um, I would get up at... I'd go at four o'clock in the afternoon, we'd start making the donuts at four, then we'd deliver them until six in the morning, and then I would start the day shift, and then, then I would serve the donuts until noon, and then I'd go to sleep for two hours and get right back up. So, and then in between, I would party with my friends, or try to, but um, I did that for oh, about two years, and then my husband saved me. Awesome. Yeah, Jason called me out of the blue and then told me I had to move to Colorado. My mom basically told me he saved me because I was falling into the mess of trying to stay awake and you start taking things to stay awake oh, wow. and then you take lowers to fall asleep. It just was a whole mess and he did. He definitely saved me. So real, that's why I said I could totally write a book. That's an awesome story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, when I came back. Which uh, you don't know this, but ultimately your success story, which we've gotten a very small piece of here. Yeah. Uh, with what you just said about your childhood and your work history and everything is why I wanted you to do this podcast with me. Yes. Because you are super smart, super successful, and you have a lot of, you're a different mind. Um, then you're not, you're, you're not the average mind. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> see, so. I need to see that. Um, yeah. But no, uh, when we moved back, I went and did my GD. That was mm -hmm. one of the things that I wanted to to make sure I graduated with my class. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't graduate with them. I wouldn't walk with them. I didn't go to prom or anything. But I wanted to make sure that I could say I graduated in 1992. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And um, and then I, it was a, a whole like $80,000 in colleges later that I <laughs> – and so I took a bunch of classes, and mine was always – I always pushed myself. So that's that's kind of where we – we have four children from that. I, First baby was when I was 20. Wow. So, so we both defied the odds for sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that you had left school too. But I guess I had, I was thinking about that yeah. when I was telling the story and you seemed shocked. And I yeah. guess that I had never shared that with you, but yeah. I always knew that we had that in common. It was another motivation uh, why I wanted you on this podcast. And I've always wanted to look at the camera and say, hi, I'm Joe. This is Christina. <laughs> and we, we have GEDs. <laughs> And we make more money than you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. It's Lighten up. Yeah. Lighten up. That's All awesome. Right. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, go ahead. So mine is, where did you grow up? Uh, yeah, so I had an interesting childhood. Um, I My mother had me young. My fa mother and father were both young. Uh, my dad was in the Army. Uh, they got married young. Um, had me, I think my mom was 20 or 19, 19 or 20, something like that when she had me. They got divorced, uh, I think before, they were split up before I even got born. So I, I, I don't know if they were to finish with the divorce or whatever, but they were split up. Before you were born? Before I was born. Um, I think my dad, I don't, yeah, I don't know 
what was going on back then. There's a lot of argument back and forth between the two, and I don't really care, to be honest with you. So, Dad, sorry. I mean, I don't mean that personally, right. but I just, you know. Well, you weren't born then. Yeah, I just, it doesn't, it doesn't make a whole hell of a lot yeah. of difference to me, if that makes yeah. sense to anybody. Yeah. Because um, I've heard both sides of the story. I have somewhat of a, you know, both sides of the story put together for mm -hmm. what probably happened, you know. Uh, a fair shake at what probably happened and there's no point in getting into it so yeah. I'll, I'll move on from there so i was born in kansas city um lived with my mom and my mom lived with my grandparents and my uncle my uncle was probably gosh he was probably 17 or 18 when i was born so he was a pretty young guy uh when i was born and he hung out with me a lot as a kid joined the army when he was 18 um was he your inspiration in a lot of ways mm -hmm. yeah i mean i mean i have a lot of inspirations my if i had to pick one person in my life that was like my role model or anything it'd be my grandfather and i don't think anybody that knew him would be offended by mm -hmm. not being picked right so mm -hmm. um but i have a lot of inspirations i have a lot of people that i look up to and take their try to take on their best characteristics you know uh, because we all have our flaws. Yes, we do. So, born in Kansas City, lived in South Kansas City with my mom and uh, my grandparents and my uncle for a little bit. And then they bought a farm out in the middle of nowhere, in, way south of Kansas City. And we lived out there when I was super young. And then I moved in with my mother uh, when she got remarried. And that was... I'm just not going to talk about that much. Yeah. Um, just for, uh, for for her, I'm not going to talk about that much. It was there was challenges, and uh, she went through a lot. And I know she was trying for me, and she certainly had her failings. Um, it was tough. It was a tough childhood. We went through a lot, and you know she was trying. So. Mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that. And uh, then, you know, my childhood obviously was shortened uh, because of what I've already said. So yeah. um, I ran away at some point and ran away with a girl to Alabama and then came back by force. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got, locked, got locked up in Alabama, my dad and my uncle and uh, my dad's best friend, Eric, who's now passed away. They all came down there and, and picked me up and kind of had like a come to Jesus meeting with me in the truck. And oh. it was a long drive yeah. and, you know, what are you doing with your life type of stuff. And I think they all knew that things weren't great at home. Um, and I would go visit my dad all the time, you know. Spent a lot of time with my dad in the summertime going to the lake, down to Table Rock Lake in southern Missouri. And spent a lot of time with my uncle and grandfather in at Truman Lake and Lake of the Ozarks. So I'm a lake kid. That's why I bought a lake house. Yeah. Uh, those are fond memories uh, with all those guys. So ultimately all, all three of those people had something to do with me and ended up here. Uh, but yeah, so I would go back and forth and then I lived with my dad for a little bit after I ran away. Um, and he lives in, it's a, it's technically a suburb of Kansas city, uh, Raytown, Missouri, it was right by the stadium. Nice. And if you look at the map, Kansas City actually swallowed Raytown. <laughs> and it's its city limits extend all the way. So anywhere, any direction you leave Raytown, you're in Kansas City. So um, spent some time there. And then it was time to go. Spent some time living with my aunt and uncle. I don't want to uh, shortchange anybody. Yeah. I moved around a lot. Let's yeah. just say that. I lived with a lot of different people. I lived... Uh, you know, my mom would disagree with a lot of this, but it's not her show, so I don't really care. Oh. Um, I spent time living, like, extended periods of time with my grandparents where I'd stay a month or two or three. I, I consider that living with people at that point. You're not visiting anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's so, true. Yeah. You know, so I did a lot of that, you know, to escape some of the stuff that was going on. Uh, my, my mom was in an abusive relationship and stuff like that, so I didn't get along with my uh, mom's husband at the time and they had 
uh, two, two siblings of mine. So I love them to death and always wanted to take care of them, but I was also significantly older than them. And it was kind of weird. I want to mention this. It has nothing to do with any of this, but it's kind of weird. Uh, my mom had my oldest sibling, which is she's nine years younger than me. And um, immediately, like almost nine months, like I would have to do the math. Nine months later, my dad and stepmom had a little girl. That's weird. Yeah, and I told them recently. You the same night. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. I recently told them and confronted them about it, and I was like, well, were you guys having a competition or something? Like, what go? the hell? <laughs> you know, because it, it seemed like we, I had babies in both houses, and then my uh, oldest little brother came, and then like nine months later, my youngest little brother came on the other side. How crazy is that? It was weird. Yeah, so, <laughs> that is weird. So yeah, that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm from. I'm from KC. Uh, that's what I say. I mean, yeah. spent significant time in Kansas City, in all the suburbs, and out way out in the country. And so a little bit of country, a little bit of rock and roll. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we grew up kind of almost same, well, kind of same. Similar. Yeah, similar. Very a similar. lot of similarities. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because when people ask me, Shame on me for never sharing that with you because I've known that for a while. <laughs> yeah, like I know. you've always told me all your stories, and yeah. I'm not, I, I guess I've always internalized that and just kind of thought, well, well maybe I did tell. Oh, it. we're we're like the same. Yeah, we, we did the same. <laughs> right. Never bothered to tell you that. I know. <laughs> Jeez, a lot in common. I didn't yeah. even realize. Yeah, exactly. You know, do you know when people ask you about your background or your childhood, mm -hmm. like when you ask me, mm -hmm. did you notice that I tend to go all negative, like because my your first thought is everything that you dealt with as a kid. Yeah. And in that whole process, I didn't mention, like I had the best mom in the whole damn world, mm -hmm. right? Um, who made every single crappy day better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? She was always there to protect us. And um, so I noticed that that whole thing I just said, there wasn't, I didn't mention, there was beautiful times in between. Oh, for sure, mom. for so, sure. And that's an interesting point. I think a lot of people do that. And, mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. So I think we should definitely take a moment and thank all the people that made it great. Yes. I had great people. I, I hope I, you know, I mentioned them enough and, and talked about all the great things they did for me. My mom tried her ass off. Um, my dad always tried his ass off. You know, my aunt and uncle were always there. My grandparents were exceptional. Um, so, I mean, there was a lot of love in my childhood too. Yeah. That we don't, we tend to overlook my, my grandmother. <laughs> I was so broke, and my aunt was so broke, too. I lived with my aunt. Um, mm -hmm. I lived with my aunt, Tina, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> Better be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's, um, uh, she was amazing, and she still is to this day. I can, I can call her, and we can both break down crying on the phone and talk about the old times and stuff. And then my grandma was um, awesome. We ate hard noodles. I was so broke that I didn't eat nothing. I literally lost 80 pounds in that summer. It was wow. crazy. But um, when I moved in with my aunt, I was okay. <laughs> she took care of me. Yeah. So definitely been a lot of people along the way that took care of me. So yeah, yeah crazy world. Yeah, share more. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a dude. I well, okay. I'll let you pass. <laughs> so is it my turn? Yes. All right. So this is a good one. I like you said before while we were writing all these down. You said all my questions would be analytical and like have driven purposes and they do yep so <laughs> what motivates you my kids okay um How so well like what do you okay. want for them what, what you, you, anybody could say their kids so there's a couple of things and it's funny because i don't want to say what motivates me really is to win i know that sounds so bad why i don't know why is it bad because i want to be it's because you do, I don't know, because I'm not that person. What? Yeah, you are. <laughs> you are too. <laughs> Am I that person? Yeah. It always has been my motivation. So. I want to beat everybody, everything, yes. anything I do, yep. I want to beat everyone. Yeah, that's my motivation, really. What's wrong with that? It could be very selfish and destructive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's got me really far on sales. Yeah. Because I can compete very well. Mm -hmm. on, like I, if there's, if I can see that this person is making this many sales, oh hell yeah, you know I'm going to try to do better. And that's, um, it's a inner competition, and I try not to let it go. 
Too far. Well, you could get destructive on like uh, the Joneses. And when I was keeping young, up with yes. the Joneses, yeah. And when I was young, it was very much keeping up with the Joneses and my granny. Yeah. And since I've gotten older, that's back down. I mean, I don't need the big house and the nice car. And the, so now it's my motivation is still, I still want to win, <laughs> but it's more of a, I want to win for my family. It's not, I want to win because I'm going to work hard. It's more of a, um, I want my kids to be successful. I want to, when I leave this world, um, cause right now I have like five businesses I'm trying to get going, <laughs> um, that I leave them something. I wasn't left really anything. Not mm. that my mom needed to, she, you know, but, um, I want to make sure that they have fundamentals to take care of themselves. And mm -hmm. So, and that's my biggest motivation. You just want them to be better off than you were. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's sort of cliche, but a cliche is a cliche for a reason. Because yes. it's true. Yes. <laughs> most of the time. Well, right? and also, do you notice with your kids, and I know these are all more questions, but do you notice with your kids living such a hard childhood, do you say yes more often than no? All the time. My kids are spoiled yeah. brats. Yes, mine yeah. are too. And that, to, to the point of am I making rotten kids? I mean, they're really good kids, but I want to make sure that they struggle. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how to do that. I don't want to make it sound like I didn't have nice things mm -hmm. when I was a kid, but I've had tons of conversations with people that were in my life and doing good things for me when I was mm -hmm. a kid. And... You know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings in, mm -hmm. in my, especially my mother. Uh, but the fact is that we weren't living a good life out there. And a lot of times people would get me stuff and then they would like say, hey, why don't you keep it here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I had nice things, you know, when I go to my dad's house or I had nice things when I go to my grandma's house. But it wasn't yours. Kind of wasn't. No. A lot of times, you know, in a lot of ways. And I don't want to sound ungrateful yeah. in any way, shape, or form. But no, that's that needs to be out there because it isn't yours. It yeah. wasn't yours. Yeah. And I and I I get that. Yeah. I understand why they did it. Mm. Uh, I do. Because they want to keep it nice and at your house. Yeah. At their house so they have something to play with when you come over yeah. or do so yeah. yeah, I get it too. And things would disappear and get destroyed and stuff like that out there. Mm -hmm. Um so hey. You know, I don't know if my mom's watching this or whatever, but I'm not blaming her right. or anything like that. It's nothing nasty or anything like that. It's just a fact that that stuff happened. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, you know, you had a lot of good people doing a lot of good things for you, but you end up having to go back to that house that you ultimately live in and things aren't always the best out there. So, uh, so. with your kids, you're... Yeah, absolutely. They're spoiled. They yeah, have so much crap. Yep. <laughs> yep. And that's the first person you buy for them yourself. You know, if I have money and they need something, they're getting yeah. it first. So, yeah. No. Nope. I find, like, maybe you find this with your kids too. Like, a lot of times I'll, I'll be like, hey, I can't, I'll get this feeling like I want to buy them something or get them something to, mm -hmm. you know, because I just want to put a smile on their face or whatever. And they don't appreciate it in the same way. And I don't mean that negatively towards my kids. They're good kids and they appreciate things. But it doesn't bring the same amount of joy that it would have to me as a kid. Yes. Because yep. they have stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like if I got that when I was a kid, I would have freaked out. Right. right? And you were expecting that reaction from them. Right. But yeah. they don't freak out like that because they have nice stuff everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That so, yeah. You know. It's weird. It's strange. I hope that it keeps them from having an urge to buy stuff when they're older. That's my hope. I think so. I got to mention, I got to do a shout out to my son, oldest son, who's who's taught me a lot in life that um, that happy is all that matters. Yeah. yeah. So when he moved out, he moved out. All my kids moved out at 18. I'm like they do not want to be in the house, <laughs> <laughs> which is. It's a great house to be in. We're just very, my husband's very strict. <laughs> I'm the no, I mean, I'm the yes person. He's the no person. Yeah, so I was like, going to say, you're not the no. I am not the no. Yeah. So he moved out at 18 into his sister's closet. Jason's a very reasonable no, by the way, Jason. You're, you're right. You're <laughs> right. Not. You're good. Keep doing it, Jason. You keep doing it. But he moved out to 
his older sister's apartment yeah. and lived in her closet and paid her 150 a month. That was his, <laughs> that's where he lived. <laughs> and he was happy. And I said, baby, are you going to get your own place? He's like, why? This is like beautiful. And so then <laughs> he, he finally bought the, the modular in the lake. And okay. then, then now he has his house. But he's anything to happy is all you need to be in life. And he doesn't have any bills at all. Other That's than awesome. now yeah. his house, he won't. He'll pay it off so he doesn't have any. But he wants to buy his swords and stuff. So I've taught. he's taught me a lot on you don't have to have things to be happy anymore. I mean, so I'm definitely there. I'm not mm -hmm. uh, as materialistic as I was when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, because I, you know, there for a while, like stuff was all that mattered to me. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to call anybody out, <laughs> but somebody when I was younger used to say, jokingly, jokingly say, he who dies with the most toys wins. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And I think I kind of took that to heart, which is yep. not that person's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely uh, took that to heart a little bit. And when I was in my early 20s and deploying and out making quite a bit of money, uh, I wish that I had done different things with that money, but... Yeah. I bought a lot of stuff. Some of it I still have. Some of it I don't, but um, I don't know. Happy. Yeah. Is it my turn? I think it's your turn. Okay. Um, so, Joe, why are you doing this show? Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> yes. That's a big one. Hmm. <sighs> many answers to that question. There's many, many yes. answers to that question. Many motivations to this show. One is I get super frustrated with the voices that are being heard out there. The loudest voices are seemingly the craziest voices. And I would love to just be a voice of steady reason. And maybe I'm not right all the time, but I would like to people to see the show and be like, you know, he thinks out everything, right? Yes. Yeah. That's all I really want is people to watch this. And he really thought about his opinion. Maybe I don't like it, but he considered all sides. Well, and you educate, I noticed. Yeah, that's a, that's a military thing. I love I, it. I did a lot of training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I, I get into training mode pretty easily. But that's one motivation. Uh, the other motivation is I needed a creative outlet. I'm a creative person. And recently, I realized that I wasn't doing anything in my life creative. And in some ways, the military had taken that away from me, not intentionally by any means, but by means of my job. Um, the only place I could get creative is solving problems, which is where I spent a majority of my time just solving problems. Yeah. So I spent all my creative time solving these problems that the military has in it. What I stuck, I really got depressed for a while because a lot of times what you'll do in the military, especially if you stay at one base for a long time, is you'll you'll get to the point where you've solved this problem before, and people don't even rem remember that you've been been at that base longer than other people. So the same problem will pop up, and you'll be like, "I know how to fix this." Yeah. And they're like, "You? Yeah, check this out." And you already have the explanation and the problem to kind of be like, "Yeah, we can fix this." And you explain it, and then everybody's like, "Well, that dude's really smart." Yeah, right? I was gonna say that's what I'm like. Uh, oh God, it's just <laughs> this is the third time around. <laughs> right? Yeah. So at some point, I had been at this base so long that I stopped getting to use my creativity to solve problems because we had solved the same problems over and over mm -hmm. again, and they pop up with new people. Yeah. New people come in, they change stuff. You can't be everywhere at once, and ultimately, I wasn't in charge of my whole shop until the end of my career, which is, that's normal, right. right? The end of your career, that's when you have the most kind of bubble, the biggest sphere of influence. So at the end of my career, I was all fired up because I had all these problems that I wanted to solve permanently and put in like regulations and do it the right way where it's in the book. And if you're going to change this, you're going to change a damn regulation and you're going to explain it to a general. That's awesome. Why you're explaining this. So I was fired up, right? And then the flood happened. <laughs> and then Corona happened. Yeah. And so I spent 
my last couple years in the Air Force solving how we were going to get by on a day-to-day -day basis from the flooded base where we lost most of our real estate oh. and all of that stuff. But anyway, that was a really long explanation to say I needed a creative outlet. <laughs> this is a good creative yeah. outlet. Yeah, <laughs> this is a good creative outlet. I get to do a little bit of what I uh -huh. like to do, whatever I want to do. I made that thing there, and I, yeah. I'm kind of proud of that. I think people like that. I think, yeah, this is... Badass. We get more really likes good. on this thing than we way yeah. more likes on this thing than we do our videos. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Like, please, if you like this, come like our video and subscribe. Buy the t-shirt. If <laughs> yeah. you like this, buy the t-shirt. <laughs> but yeah, this is my creative outlet. So that's what well, I want to do this. Thank and you for sharing it with me. I love it. Yeah. The other last motivation, and I think it should be the last motivation, is if this ever gets big, it would be nice to get a little extra money. But yeah, you know, that's... I don't really care. That's a cherry on top. You yeah. know what I mean? Yep. If we make a cake and nice icing and everything, and put some ice cream on top and we don't get the cherry, that's fine. Yep. Well, so, you'll have this. We'll have this forever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So if we hopefully we'll have it forever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Any more? Yeah, I have more. Okay. What scares you? It was a very emotional, visceral response that you had just then. Yeah, I'm trying to think. What does scare me? Um, my husband would say everything. No. <laughs> um, no. I, th I think I'm not afraid to die. I mean, if you go through, like, if you go straight out, I'm not afraid to die. I okay. was. I used to be. All right. Um, before my mom passed. And now I'm, I'm okay now. Which, okay. Which is weird. Um, uh, and I'm not afraid of ghosts. I turn into a fight mode when it comes to ghosts. So, okay. and I grew up with ghosts in my house. That's a whole other story. That's like a book. We um, could do a paranormal episode. <laughs> yes, that would be cool. Yeah. I have massive stories of that. Actually, was going to write a book when I was young because of it. Okay. Um, so, I was not really ever afraid of them. I don't know, honestly. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I gotta think I about this. I asked this question because I think I know the answer to it and I wanted to see if you knew the answer to it. I think sitting or like living a life less ordinary. I know huh. that would probably be it, where I'm not needed. Ah. Well, is that ah, what you got? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, that was mm -hmm. that was where I was going with it. Um mm -hmm. I know you had some career changes recently and you don't yes. have to go into that <laughs> or anything like that, but I think when that happened, I saw in you a fear of not having a purpose. And yes. I talked about that in one of my episodes that I did solo. And uh, one of my buddies commented that, yeah, when he retired from the military, it was something he struggled with of feeling like he didn't have a purpose and feeling like he didn't have a mission. Yes. Um, so I saw that in you when you yeah. did your transition. Um, and you were super scared of like not having a purpose and it just caused you to just grab all these things. Like, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I, I'm putting another application in it and I'm like, slow down. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of reaping those <laughs> like yeah. craziness that's kind of happening to me now. There's good and bad things about yeah. it though. I mean, you got a lot of stuff yeah. going on and a lot of things are starting to catch on and, and yes. become successful. So you're becoming even more successful than you were before, which yeah. is great. Yeah, so, you're right. It is. It's definitely the purpose. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> that is right on the nose. <laughs> um, if you could change one thing about this world, what would it be? Jeez, that's like a deep I know. <laughs> philosophical question. Well, you're you're a very academic guy. <laughs> oh, <not that. sighs> One thing I could change about the world. There's the, all the easy ones that everybody would say of, uh, I'd take away world hunger, or I would stop war, or I would... Um, Say all whatever. those generalized ones were gone. Yeah. I mean, if you... A war is a terrible thing, and that would probably be the one I would pick if I was going to pick one of the go-tos. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's the... the intent of the question yeah. in it so the spirit of it so i'll avoid that one um i guess what i would change about the world is i would 
Dang, that's a tough question, Christine. You're killing me, man. <laughs> I thought I was going to have all that. Oh, man, that is ones. such a tough question. I would just, uh, I would make it where people had to listen to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was kind of playing a lot around with that one. I, I don't want everybody to think the same way. Um, I am not the conservative that wants to win over more conservatives. I don't really care if you're a conservative or a liberal or a whatever. I despise socialists and communists. I don't care about that. And, you know, if you're one of those, yeah, I don't like you. <laughs> but yeah. um, all the other ideologies, um, I don't care. It's fine with me. But I just wish we had a better free exchange of ideas and could kind of open our hearts a little bit to people. So I'm not an emotional person. See, that's where I go is the heart. Yeah, you the, do go to the, the heart. heart. I don't care about the heart. I just, I just don't. It's okay. And I'm just, I know that sounds crazy and maybe cold. No. But it's not what I'm looking for. I would like an intellectual, honest exchange of ideas where we could debate things like politics and look at something and say, you know what? I am opposed to 99% of the things that you bring up, but you make a good point here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that's what I would change. And it's a worldwide problem. It's not a United States problem. So it's a worldwide problem. That's what I would change. That's good. Yeah. So is my turn? Yep. Okay. Last question for you. What's the weirdest thing that's ever happened to you or scenario that you've ever been a part of? Okay, so this is not, I don't know if this is weird. Just I have to, let me think about that. That's the question, Christina. So weird, I have to, okay, fine. <laughs> Weirdest. Strangest thing, just like off the wall. Like if you had to tell this story. That's a hard one. Everybody's like, no way. That didn't happen. This is not going to be as fun as it sounds, but I worked at um, a grocery store in Lock Bui, Colorado. Okay, Lock Bui. <laughs> that tells you how small it was. Okay, I've never been to Lock Bui. <laughs> um, in a lot of places. Well, you can travel past it on your way to Estes Park. I mean, it's not in Estes Park, but it's like way far. So you have like maybe a, another 150 miles to get to Estes. Okay. Um, and everybody, one day I was at the, you know, at the cashier. And everybody started freaking out. And there was a line standing in front of the bathroom. And I was like, what the heck? What's going on? And the lady goes, Stephen King is in the bathroom. And I'm like, no, he's not. I'm in like Bowie. <laughs> and so he's like, yeah, Stephen King's in the bathroom. So his books were flying off the shelf. And I'm like, yeah. trying to, this is my favorite. He loves Estes Park. I love Stephen King. I love yeah. his books. I was yeah. totally into his books at the time. And this I was like, dude's just on his way to Estes Park. They're to hang doing out. the Shining Part Two. Oh, is what they were they were doing. I didn't know. Okay. And I was so I grabbed a napkin. It was the only thing I could grab. And he comes up and he's read. You know, he's checking out. After he gets out of the bathroom, they bombard him with, "Hey, will you sign my book? Could you imagine going pee and then having like a whole? <laughs> I could not believe it. So he comes up <laughs> to check out his drink. Happens all the time to me. I'm a big YouTube <laughs> yeah, star. That's right. <laughs> so he, I go, hey, what brings you to our little town? And he goes, I had to take a piss. <laughs> I was like, no. It's like, you, can you sign my napkin? <laughs> but yeah, that was crazy. We had the, uh, for some reason, <laughs> Mock Bowie got celebrities. We had, did he sign it? Yeah, he did. Was he cool after that? Or yeah. was he kind of like, he was see like, ya? He was irritated because of the line. Right. But yeah, I know he was good. I was like, oh, you're just like my favorite author. And he's like, well, thank you. And he's a very quiet guy. So yeah. having someone bombard yeah. him, I don't think they liked it at all. But yeah, I could get that. I could see that. Um, the Dead came. Uh, who was the, well, you guys are going to shoot me. Who's the lead singer of The Dead? What was his name? The great, I'm not Jason. I don't know this stuff. Oh, come on, Joe. Um, I, can't, I couldn't even name one Grateful Dead even, song. Okay, so they, I got one of my military buddies. If he's watching this, he's gonna be mad because he's like a like super deadhead. Jerry, oh, I know, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna mess it up. But he came to Lake Bowie too. He okay. and when uh, 
we were on the floor, we were mopping and looked up and it was him. And it was, they, they, for some reason they go through luckily. <laughs> so, Lock Bowie. Yes. But that was the weirdest so thing. So you met happened. two celebrities in Lock Bowie, Lock Colorado Bowie. of all places. Yes. That's crazy. Yes, in the middle of nowhere in Timbuktu. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. I'm, I, I accept this answer. I know. <laughs> you, I accept your answer. <laughs> That's all I have. I think we've learned quite a lot. Yeah, tonight. This quite has a been bit. A great. Yeah. I think it's a different mood and a different atmosphere. I think we need to cheer it up a little bit because yes. this channel, it's I flee the first. We can talk about anything and everything yep. that we want to talk about. And it doesn't always have to be about politics. It doesn't always have to be uh, conservative this and liberal that. Um, because I think in America today, we need to step back from that every now and then. Yes. And just let it breathe. Yeah. And kind of let things soak in. Let's just live like there's other stuff going on in the world. Yep. See that, you know, hopefully the people who watch this, watch it all the way and kind of like, just let that stuff float away for a while. Because we'll bring it back. We, <laughs> we will have, bring it back. We have um, some fun things coming your way. Yeah, exactly. So that will be, we're going to touch into the whole, everybody that don't breathe yeah. type of situations. And exactly. we'll go more depth this next coming weeks, but. Exactly. So I think tonight we're going to close down this episode. Good. We're going to film a couple more things, so you'll see us in our same attire. Yep. Uh, but we're going to film a couple more little things here and there for uh, the channel, some smaller stuff. And don't worry, Fired Up Friday. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. And it's not It's not gone away. It's got its own little segment. Oh, yeah. Its own little segment where you keep it we're nice gonna and short. We're going to see if we can piss him off. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty easy to do. Pretty yes. easy to do. So, hey, uh, thank you for answering all those questions yeah, and opening it up to ultimately, which if we ever blow up, this could be millions of people watching I'll this. I'll never be in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get Congress. But if it doesn't blow up, it's going to be yes. like all 40 people uh, that watch this. Yep. <laughs> that are now family. You know yeah, are. exactly. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So thank you so much for opening up Absolutely. and sharing. That was fun. That yes. was fun. So I hope, hope this gave you a, a fun, light Friday night. Go out and party. Have a good time with your friends. Don't drink and drive. Take care of each other. Keep each other out of trouble. Come back safe. Uh, that's your safety briefing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks, Thanks. guys. Everybody smoking all the greenery. Yeah. Close the match because they were handed down to me. But I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I know. I'm still fly, I'm still fly, let's go.